If you have too much sugar in your blood for a long time, you can get a lot of different diseases. High blood sugar levels are linked directly or indirectly to kidney problems, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart problems, vision loss, and almost every other major health issue. This makes it all the more important to keep your blood glucose levels in check. In today's video, we'll talk about different forms of sugar and their respective metabolisms. We'll also tell you about the only sugar that won't raise your blood glucose levels. But before you get too excited about it, watch this video until the end and see if you could really include it in your diet. If you're trying to cut back on sugar, the first thing that comes to mind is whether all sugars are equally bad. To know that, let's understand the various types of sugar and how they are metabolized in your body. Number one, glucose. Glucose is a simple sugar or monosaccharide. It is the body's preferred energy source. Monosaccharides are carbohydrates that contain a single unit of sugar and cannot be broken down into simpler forms. They combine to form disaccharides, which contain two molecules of simple sugars. When two or more monosaccharides combine, they are known as polysaccharides. Glucose is often regarded as the building block of carbohydrates because it is usually bound to other simple sugars to form a disaccharide or polysaccharide such as sucrose and lactose. Our body relies heavily on glucose to function. When you eat food, your body breaks it down into glucose units. This is why you notice a sudden spike in blood glucose after meals. When the amount of glucose in the blood rises, cells in the pancreas release insulin, a hormone that keeps the amount of glucose in the bloody steady. Insulin makes it easier for your cells to take in glucose so that they can start making energy. As the cells absorb the glucose, your blood sugar starts dropping and you achieve healthy blood glucose levels. But what if you consume too much glucose? Well, in that case, you are likely to experience hyperglycemia or high blood glucose levels, which can contribute to growing insulin resistance. Studies have shown that hyperglycemia caused by a high glucose intake can induce glucotoxicity, a condition characterized by decreased insulin secretion and increased insulin resistance due to chronically high blood sugar. Insulin resistance can push you over the edge and lead to type 2 diabetes and other health problems, like high blood pressure and heart problems. Studies have shown that high blood glucose levels can also cause low-grade chronic inflammation and damage various organs in the long run, especially the heart. Research shows that people with diabetes are twice as likely to have heart disease or stroke as compared to people who do not have diabetes. So if you are a big fan of sugary treats, you might want to rethink your choices and prefer consuming glucose in moderation. Number two, fructose. Fructose or fruit sugar is a naturally occurring monosaccharide that you obtain from fruits, agave, and honey. It is the sweetest of all simple sugars, but guess what? Despite being the sweetest, it has a very low glycemic index and has no direct impact on your blood glucose levels or insulin production. So that makes it the only sugar that won't raise your blood glucose levels. You might think that since it's not elevating your blood sugar, you can consume as much fructose as you want. Sorry to burst your bubble, but this is not the case. Higher fructose consumption is even riskier as it has the potential to cause an infinite number of metabolic disorders. Thousands of years ago, we consumed only 20 grams of fructose per day, mainly from fresh fruits. However, that is not the scenario anymore. Fructose consumption has increased almost five times and the present day intake is nearly 100 grams. This exposure to enormous quantities of fructose has led to a dramatic rise in liver complications. Unlike glucose, which is used by the cells to derive energy, fructose is absorbed by the small intestine and then passed onto the liver, which converts it into glycogen. Glycogen is a stored form of glucose composed of many glucose molecules joined together. When your body has enough energy from food, the remaining glucose gets transferred to your liver and muscles for future use. What happens when you eat too much fructose? Studies have shown that a high dietary intake of fructose can lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, characterized by the increased buildup of fat in the liver. 
The liver is an essential organ of your body that comes with multiple supporting roles, so it is vital to take care of it. Your liver is likely to have some healthy amounts of fat, but anything above 10% of your liver weight is worth raising eyebrows. As a matter of fact, almost 70% of people with diabetes have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This happens mainly due to two reasons. First, high fructose consumption increases the protein content of DNL, or de novo lipogenesis, enzymes which are responsible for converting glycogen into fatty acids or triglycerides. This process is known as lipogenesis. Since protein is integral to the functioning of all the enzymes, higher fructose levels will enhance the production of fats in your liver. Secondly, since fructose doesn't require insulin for its metabolism, a high fructose intake would lead to unused insulin stores in your body. If you have too much insulin, it might speed up lipogenesis and help you turn glycogen into fatty acids more quickly. Besides, it can also deplete your ATP reserves or the energy currency of your cells and contribute to the production of reactive oxygen species, increasing your risk of liver cancer. So even if fructose does not directly contribute to increased blood glucose levels, it poses much more harm than the rest of the sugars. Number three, table sugar. Sucrose often goes by the name table sugar. It is a naturally occurring carbohydrate found in many fruits and plants and consists of 50% glucose and 50% fructose. It is usually present in ice creams, candies, pastries, cookies, soda, fruit juices, canned fruit, processed meat, and breakfast cereals. Number four, high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is a disaccharide formed by the combination of fructose and glucose and is widely used as a sweetener worldwide. It is produced from cornstarch by an industrial process. The two most common HFCSs present in the market are HFCS 55 is the most popular, consisting of 55% fructose, 45% glucose and water. The second is HFCS 42, which contains 42% fructose and the remaining is glucose and water. HFCS usually has a similar composition as sucrose, where the proportions of fructose and glucose are almost equal. Like sucrose, it is also used in sweetening sports drinks, bread, cookies, candies, and ice cream. Number five, agave syrup. Agave nectar is often marketed as one of the healthier sweeteners that won't elevate your blood sugar levels. However, we are unaware that it is far worse than regular sugar. The reason lies in its dangerously high fructose content. Agave syrup consists of 70 to 90% fructose and 10 to 30% glucose, a much higher percentage than plain sugar. It can spike triglycerides and severely threaten your cardiac health by causing fat deposits in your arteries. It can also accumulate fat in various parts of your body, leading to obesity, which is the mother of most disorders. You can often find agave syrup in yogurt, cereal, and fruit bars. So, what should we consume then? Fruits, vegetables, and milk products all have small amounts of natural sugars like fructose. These sugars are not harmful and help you get the nutrients you need. They are packed with a lot of fiber, important vitamins, minerals, and helpful compounds. They are great for your health and serve as wonderful options for your everyday meals. Choose whole foods that do not contain a long list of added ingredients and are in their most probable raw form. For example, go for fresh oranges instead of orange juice. Whole grains and legumes are excellent picks. And if you have to buy packaged foods, make sure to scan the ingredient listing and check for the various names that sugars go by. Choosing the right kind of sugar is important for your health, but so is keeping a healthy balance in your life. There's almost nothing that a good diet and regular exercise can't beat. So watch out for your sugar intake, drink plenty of water, activate your fitness mode, and fight all the ailments with an upper hand. Which food items did you drop from your everyday meals? Let us know in the comments below.